All right, guys, welcome to podcast number 34. And today we are going to discuss, kind of recap the 2021 game season. And I'm here with our team captain, Scott Cottrell. And uh, so we're going to talk about 2021 game season, more or less just really the semifinals, because I've talked about just the game season in general. And then uh, chat a little bit about the future of uh, our competitive kind of crew at CrossFit Grandview in the level two program. But first, I really just, I think what a lot of people want to hear about, we're watching, trying to watch like the streaming from back home. And since we're in the stud heat, they're just focused on the teams that are trying to qualify. And like, it sucked where, you know, sometimes they they finally pan over and it'd be like, you know, only an event we didn't do good on. Yeah. So it's us like, you know, finishing, yeah. you know, or something like that. So yeah. a lot of us didn't get like a full experience to see you guys as much. I watched every event start to finish and, uh, you know, I get why they're focused on the middle lane or whatever, but I'm like, yeah. shoot. So, I mean, basically I want to kind of open it up to you, like just to talk about your experience at the semifinals. Yeah. I mean, you guys did great. I mean, took ninth out of 20 teams, just getting there, especially in a COVID year is, is really impressive. I had some like companies reach out like, oh man, I didn't know you guys were in there. And yeah. really cool. So yeah, it's kind of um, open it up to you. Yeah, so overall just kind of um, went in with a solid team. So thought we'd do really well, thought we'd have a shot at possibly qualifying. So the top five out of the 20 teams uh, make it in. Um, with well, individuals, is top eight, I think the sixth, seventh, eighth get a last chance qualifier. Um, unfortunately, it's not with the teams, otherwise we would have been pretty close. Um, but overall, I thought we did pretty solid. Um, didn't execute on a couple of the events that I thought we'd do really well at. So like a lot of um, the gymnastics workout with the chest to bars, toes to bar, um, and those dumbbell overhead squats. Um, thought we'd do really solid on them, just didn't execute on it. Um, and then same with our handstand push-up form one. Um, so those are the two ones that I thought we could get like possibly top three, top five, but we finished by like ninth or tenth. That handstand push-up one, I, you know, I was watching that and I knew how solid all you guys were on it. I'm yeah. like, cause usually, you know, typically a team, especially Oftentimes on the female side, you'll have a little yeah. weakness with that move. And our girls, Allie and, and Julianne, are incredible at yeah. those. One thing I did notice, though, when they're like watching, because you guys, it might have even been something you could see. A lot of teams were really good at that. Like yeah. You guys popped off the wall quick. And yeah. I know how good you guys are. I'm like, man, I think we're going to come off the wall in the top three spot. Yeah. And then I'm looking around and I'm just seeing like multiple teams with people probably doing, you know, 30 to 40 strict throwing some stud out there who was just like bop, bop, yeah bop, 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 bop. yeah um which you guys i mean ali did that for us yeah you know but there was quite a few teams oh there. yeah we were still on the wall and i think like eight teams got off the wall and i was like oh no because <laughs> you can only make so much time on the lunges yeah. just because um coordinating with the team every step. Yeah, it's a um, synchronized yeah. lunge. It only goes so fast there. So yeah. I was like, my heart kind of sank there for a second. I was like, well, we're just going to finish the event. Um, but overall, I thought we did pretty well. Um, yeah. The most controversial event was the probably the run. So the run, everyone had uh, a ruck bag on their back. I think guy, guys were 10, 20 pounds, girls were 10 pounds. Um, so it's just like a backpack with a plate in it. And it's four laps, every lap is 1,500 meters, and you're tied with a rope, so everyone has to hold. It looks just like a regular like jump rope rope. It's just like um, you're holding it, everyone has to hold it, like you have to act, physically make contact with the rope. Um, and then every round you have to grab a sandbag, so it's just, um, it has handles on it, so you throw it over your back, hold it that way, but you still have to hold the rope in your hand. Um, so they briefed all the event. Every time you finish a lap, you have a chip timer on you, and it takes you your um, tie break time. So that's how they briefed it in um, the briefing. They said if you don't finish, you're just gonna, or they didn't really say if you don't finish. They said um, every time you finish, your time will be taken, so that'll be your tie break time. So everyone kind of thought, all right, 
if there's a ties by chance getting to the finish line, that's going to be like the way they decide sure. it. Um, they never said if you don't finish, how they're going to place the teams. Um, I don't think they really tested the event, to be honest, because only one team finished out of all 20. When I saw it, like, so we were all watching it at the gym. So it was, it, we're all watching it at the gym, and it was cool because our whole summer shred group was there, so we had like 30 people in the line yeah. watching it. And I'm watching, we just came off running the 5K, and uh, I'm like, this is six with everyone going together in the rope. I'm like, this is a 40 minute AMRAP. Yeah. And, uh, and then when I heard how they scored it, yeah. my I, my mind was blown. Oh yeah. I'm like, it's a race, correct? Yeah. I'm like, how do you not score a race based on where you finish the race? Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a balls out finish to this checkpoint, and then you might as well just chill out inside yeah. the rest of the the race. Yeah. Like, you're not making it. Yeah. You know, one team was able to make it, and I mean, they had to just be hoofing it to make that, yeah. that 40 minute cap. Yeah. I'm like, how is a race, when they tell you, you know, get out and everyone's still racing, yeah. like based on where you finish is where you yeah. race. Yeah. And it's not hard to figure that out. It's not like, well, we have to go back and look at chip timers. Yeah. Just look at where the teams are yeah. laid out at the end of a, just like an AMRAP in the open. It's yeah. not like, well, based on where you got to at two minutes left in the workout, that's where you're done. Yeah. Still, um, I'm confused, and you guys probably lost. I mean, had they they scored it by where you finished the race, yeah, in placement, I think you would have got like seventh, yeah, overall, yeah, I six or seven. Like we came you guys, in. I mean, that's 40, 50 points. Yeah, so we that. came in. So you have to come in every lap, go into inside the stadium, go around, grab your sandbag, and then on the way out is where the black pad is that takes your chip time so yeah. when we got in a um, couple of members of the team we'd use that to kind of like get it water just like cool down for a second um, so we did that on the third lap because we knew we had one lap to go so that's the lap we're going to push it so we came in I think a team or two passed us passed the chip timer so we lost probably two or three spots there um, but once we got out there we passed like four to five teams because we thought it would be where you placed on the field. So when we finished the race, we're like, the race? we're like, we yelled at the judge, like, how are we scoring this? Do we stay where we're at? And they're like, no, no, it's based on the last lap. And I don't know. It was just big controversy. Um, it wasn't just our team. Pretty much every team didn't even know. All the Invictus teams, we went back to the, the room and they were all mad because I think one of their teams was got inside was about like a hundred yards from their finish mat and didn't finish in lost placing because they didn't get to the finish so it's based on their third lap time oh wow. so and they, they were they were steps away from like yeah. finishing the whole thing overall yeah. yeah that i mean that's i think you know <clears throat> i think they're still figuring like obviously i think in the heyday of of regionals when you know Reebok was involved and in, in all of that. And I mean, it was, it was a well-oiled machine, yeah. you know, back when, I mean, I remember going into, they have like full, you know, buffets longer than this table for yeah. all the athletes in between events. I mean, sweet potatoes yeah. and fueling up and drinking coconut water. And yeah. like, you know, we had a Rosti working on us in between every event yeah. and, and all of that. And, you know, I think what happened is the whole thing got defunded, you know, a couple years ago. And what they're doing now is just trying to get it back on track. And I really yeah. do think in the next two or three years, I, I'm, I know they're going to get it back to that yeah. level. I just, I think we've, we're actually at this weird spot where the sport went backwards a little bit. Oh yeah, the past like two or three years. Yeah, yeah. and and it's getting, they've got the right. It's getting back on track, and this is we're still in the COVID year. Next year, COVID should not be a factor anymore, yeah. and I think you know things will get back yeah. on track. And and you know, and what we'll talk about later is hopefully we, we're we're making a, a a games run yeah. with some thought going into it. You know, like this year was you guys did a phenomenal job putting together a team and you worked really hard, you know, post 
open. Um, but it's a challenge to just like, okay, hey, we got you know, what, yeah. six, six weeks to yeah. you know, try and make a games run. So yep. um, other than that, like, uh, you know, what did the, how was the event and, and all of that? Did you think it was just like, they're still trying to figure things out, sort of? Yeah, it, uh, it was a, um, a good event. I think they kind of put it together last minute a little bit just because they switched venues it's supposed to be in california but with like covid restrictions they had to move it out to um las vegas so it was a little felt like a little last minute preparation with it um a lot of the events didn't because they did a bunch of repeats so um they took like past regional and games workouts um and brought them back to 2021 so a lot of them didn't have um, like descriptions on like the website of like actually what the workout is. Did they just say they're the same one? So they're assuming all of the athletes maybe knew the rules or, or whatever. That's what happens. they said with the run. They're like, oh, that's how it was done in 2019. And then they didn't they didn't brief it. So when they got a lot of teams asking them or telling them, hey, you never said this, then like, they would say, um, that's how it was back in the day. Well, not all of us were there during that time. Um, but anyways, um, with all that, um, yeah, just a little bit off. Like when we'd ask the head judge during briefings, like, can we do this? Or like, can we re rearrange people on the worm? Or like certain questions, like she, you could tell she didn't really know the answer to it. Like she'd have to They go. weren't totally dialed in yeah. to like exactly what, it wasn't like where they had basically you know like boz and like the whole games crew that's crafting the workouts yeah, yeah. they're demonstrating them yeah. and knowing like they design the workouts yeah. and then they're telling you that's how i yeah. remember regionals yeah like, yeah no you could tell us she didn't know all the answers to it like she'd have to go and ask like the head programmer who was there um that's the tricky thing i think coming out of the old era where the um the people designing the workouts were the ones briefing it. And yeah. then it was level one seminar staff for the most part out yeah. there judging and yeah. and then demoing the workouts and things like that where, yeah. you know, there was just a lot more continuity and now you have new companies coming in and they're, they're essentially outsourcing these events. Yeah. It, it's going to take some time, I think before they, I, I think, you know, they'll figure out like, okay, we got to send our representatives out here yep. to make sure we're, we're, yep. we're seeing this and running in the yep. right way. But no, I appreciate you, uh, you know, kind of giving us a recap and, and we love watching it and you guys represented the gym super well. Um, I think, you know, I, I want to kind of use this as a segue into talking about uh, what this kind of goes into is what we figured out this year which was, we almost had like two years of transition where they went to like super regionals and then they essentially like defunded the games and then it was like, uh, uh, they made it where it was only like 10 teams and 10 masters and they made it so tough to get in or you're going yeah. to these sanctionals that it was really a challenge to even put any emphasis on, on doing it or it almost seemed like what was the point in trying. Uh, but now the new format brings it kind of back. And what that also is doing is really bringing back, I think, the competitive drive for a lot of these athletes because there is opportunities now to compete again in the actual official sport of CrossFit. Um, not only at like that semifinal level, but what's cool is like the uh, quarterfinals yep. and things like that. So you, there's more layers of qualification and what I want to do is kind of reintroduce the level two program to the membership. So our level two program post pandemic, we used to have it at noon and five 30. And right now it's just at 1 PM, uh, during the week. And, uh, the difference between these two programs is our all level program is a program that's designed for health and fitness and to really maximize your health and fitness. It's an unbiased program. It is, uh, we're gonna touch a lot of different things. It's a sustainable program. It's one that we're not, um, we're not trying to peak during certain parts of like a game season. 
We are trying to keep people primed and fit all year round with a really broad scope of activities. Uh, level two is designed for uh, getting people good at CrossFit competition. And what we actually do is we narrow the scope of what we're training to things that are more likely to come up in the games and get people really good at that stuff. Whether it's handstand walking over a ramp, ring muscle-ups, cycling barbells, learning how to uh, do burpee box jumps for speed, um, just getting people really fit and good at the sport of CrossFit. Um, so that's kind of the difference. There's just, a, it's the intent is totally different. It's not one is better than the other, just depends on what your goal is. Uh, so new class time. So what we are gonna add, and we're gonna experiment with it, and we're gonna see how it works, is adding a 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. It's almost like a level two open gym time. So that's a time that we've figured out that more people in the evening are doing competitive training, whether it's on their own, doing maybe programs outside of the gym, or tackling the level two on their own. And, and the way we're gonna do that is uh, Nick, who was um, on our team, he is going to facilitate that workout with small groups of you know, anywhere from three to six people. We're gonna go ahead and, it's gonna still say open gym, but it's gonna say L2 open gym. So you can still do open gym then, but what we're, we wanna do is kind of funnel our people who are interested in that class to those times. And he's gonna do this for the most part on the rig outside is where we're gonna run that. And the idea is before the weather breaks is hopefully we are in our new facility. Otherwise we'll move it inside and it'll be fine. Um, but that's where we'll typically run it. When, of course with weather, we'll kind of push it inside and we'll work around the class. Uh, and then where I wanna kind of dive into is what happened between 2019 and 20 is we had newer members come into the gym and then when we didn't offer that level two at night, it kind of left a vacuum and understandably so where people started taking on like things like comp train and different programming from other gyms, which I don't have an issue with and I you know, encourage people to see what's out there. Um, but ideally we want people training our training protocols in our gym, uh, representing our gym in competition, and uh, and really we think it's ideal for it too. The the training that Scott's going to put together for level two, it's built for our facility, it's built for our membership and our weather. Um, one of the most important parts of it, and, and we ran into some issues with it this year, it allows us to evaluate uh, our competitive athletes and then modify for the group around that. So. We went to the open and we had people, we had like Nick and Mary and some people come out of the woodwork who I, I had no idea how good these guys were. They're awesome at CrossFit, but without them training with the group and seeing how they're pushing against other people, there was no way to evaluate that talent. Um, it's good for the community and the gym culture. Uh, doing this common training builds camaraderie and intensity and I think the best example is the best team in CrossFit history, it's, it's Mayhem. So they train together all year round. Uh, you know, they do the same, they do common training, they're working together and pushing towards a common goal. And they have success year in and year out. And when we've had our games teams and the success at the highest level, it really has came down to everyone pushing towards a common goal year round. Um, and then it, it creates accountability and consistency to the group. And I was kind of talking to Scott, I'm like, you know, if you're doing, say you're doing like comp training, which is, it's a phenomenal program. They put it together really well. Um, in the corner of the gym, you know, at 10 AM, and then you just kind of get a little burnout or you're just, you know, no one's going to know if you're there or not. There's not a lot of accountability to that. So. Being a part of the group creates that accountability. When we had teams and things like that 
going. If someone wasn't at training for three or four days, like you bet they're getting texts and stuff like where you been, what's going on. You know, if they just didn't feel like training, like that typically wasn't a valid excuse if you were wanting to be a part of that group and the team. So we'd be like, hey, get in here, you know, make sure you're in here working out. So those are just some of the reasons there's a bunch more. Um, so what we would like to invite you to do, especially if you train during those times, you're doing different programs, July 5th is when we're gonna start that. And we wanna earn, we wanna earn you guys' uh, essentially business with our training program. We want you to come work out with us, try it out. And you know, of course you're, you're able to do other programs. We don't wanna hold anyone's success back, but we'd love for you guys to come and join the group. So I think it's gonna be really cool. Um, you've done a phenomenal job so far with what you're doing with level two uh, during the day. Um, is there anything that you have like, I'm sure coming out of the games like, what do you have planned maybe for the rest of the summer, fall, anything like you can like yeah. kind of quickly speak on? Um, so like the main goal or the training towards um, next year for level two is probably um, quarterfinals. So it's more geared towards those top end movements like um, rope climbs, pistols, heavier barbells, stuff you'd probably see there. Um, we had a lot of people qualify or get out of the open, so they're making the open a little bit easier um, to get out of and move on to the next part. Um, so we had a lot of athletes get to the quarterfinals and then just kind of see different movements like maybe a pistol or like struggle on rope climbs or like high volume GHDs. Um, so that's going to be the main focus for like the, the year to come getting into like next season. Um, in terms of like short term, um, I know we just finished up um, that squat cycle. So the next block going through like summer uh, will be geared a little bit more towards um, Olympic lifts. So getting stronger at those, working on like different positions like some sods press or um, snatch balances, um, getting like different positions stronger in like an overhead squat or catching a clean, catching a jerk. Um, and then Keeping those gymnastics um, sharp, so like chest to bars, toes to bar, pistols, rope climbs, um, keeping all that stuff dialed in. So um, I know just like kind of watching a lot of people go through the open and quarterfinals, that's something that we all could be better at. So that's going to kind of keep remaining consistent in the training yeah. and then more accessory work to kind of build those smaller muscles like our mid back, lats shoulders, glutes, stuff like that. So all that stuff will kind of be thrown in there at, throughout the entire year. I think that's what's good about when you get to see and get eyes on people training too. Yep. You can see patterns yep. in groups too, where it's like, ooh, you know, we definitely need, I that, that happened one year, we had a weakness one year in our team on the handstand walk. Yep. And we worked on that and we came back the next year and we set the record uh, for the whole world on the handstand walk workout. Yeah. Um, you know, so we can see patterns if we're all kind of flown in the same direction and training. And, you know, this also, I mean, it opens up if, if you guys want extra training and things like that too, on top of that, or you have a certain weakness, um, Scott's awesome at individual design for that stuff. So he's, He's someone too. You can you can ask for some extra training and work. Yeah. Um, and he'll know based on how you're doing in level two. Like, yeah, okay, let's let's get you. Maybe you don't need to do the accessory after level two. We're gonna have you really hammer your handstand walk or yeah. whatever it might yeah. be. And I have a training protocol for that. Yeah. So I'm super excited to get this going for the people who are competitive minded. I mean, we had 27 athletes qualify for quarterfinals. And I, I don't see any reason we don't have 40 to 50 maybe next year if uh, we really get this thing yeah. going. And, and I think it's fun for people who want to compete, you know, and I'm, I'm not competing. So I'm, I'm, I'm fully focused on the all level program and I'm turning this program over to Scott and, and I'm super excited. I think he's going to crush yeah. it this year. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for it. Uh, I think we can we can kind of wrap up here and I, I, want, I just want to like reiterate a couple schedule changes 
Um, one is just, again, it'll start July 5th, 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. That is going to be uh, Monday through Thursday, okay? Uh, 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. Um, open gym slash level two. And then one other small change we are gonna have, it's not this weekend, but it will start the 4th of July. Sundays, our classes, we're still gonna offer four. We're moving the times a little bit just due to the last class being very flat and small. So we're only having a few people show up in that last class. It's gonna be sim more similar to Saturday. We're gonna go 9, 10, 11, and noon back to back without the 30 minute break. So we're just wearing the coaches out, just kind of like lingering around for a half hour in between each class. So we're gonna plow straight through 9, 10, 11, and noon. Uh, Sundays starting July 4th, okay? Uh, I hope you guys like this podcast. We will see you for number 35 soon.